Hello everybody, KWIP here, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Trials. And in This Week of Trials, it is the survival game mode on the Dead Cliffs. And so far, I think that it's playing pretty well. It can be a bit more fast-paced than a lot of Trials has been thus far. If you go up against really try-hard teams, then games will slow down a bit, but I think this weekend of Trials is playing quite nicely so far. Now I'll dive right on into my weapon suggestions. I'd say on this map you can be a little bit more flexible than the prior maps, because this map is one of the smaller maps in the game, and so it's not like the last couple where a scout rifle is absolutely necessary. Scout rifles can definitely still be very strong on this map. There are many opportunities for long range engagements where you will want a scout like probably the Mita multi-tool, and powerful scouts like that will work well in quite a few areas of the map, but there is also a good amount of cover on this map and it's usually pretty easy to get into a more of a mid-range fight if that's what you want and you don't want to use a scout rifle. So often using like a slow rate of fire auto such as the Prosecutor or the Uriel's Gift is going to be a really nice option for you. It'll be really strong in the mid-range, quite solid in close range where you can get into a lot of fights. And on this map you can dictate pretty well where you want your fights to happen, so you can be in a lot of fights where it will be convenient to have your auto. And then going along with that, there is also a lot of opportunities to have close range fights on this map, so having a sidearm or a submachine gun is also a very good thing to use. Like using one of the three round burst sidearms, or maybe the adjudicator or antiope, those will be super nice options, because it's not too hard to get close to people on this map, and you can have a really good time to kill using those weapons. So yeah, I would say just kind of pick from that pooling of weapons, running like a scout rifle or a sidearm, or maybe an auto rifle and a submachine gun if you don't like scouts and you want to keep your engagements a bit closer. And I think picking any combination of the weapons that I've mentioned will work very well on this map. And you just have to be aware of challenging in your optimal range for the guns you're using. Because you can make a lot of different things work on this map. And then for which power weapons to use, a very popular option on this map is rockets, and that will be pretty effective. People can group up a lot in this game mode, so you can get some group kills through that. If you're playing against a campy team, it's a good way to get some easy picks without committing yourself too much to trying to get a kill, because you can just kind of peek out really quickly, shoot your rocket, and then get back into cover. So rockets should be a pretty consistent option, kind of regardless of what situation you're in. However, if you do get in a pretty fast-paced game, and teams aren't camping really hard, then shotguns and Fusions are going to be extremely good options on this map. You can get to their optimal ranges quite easily, and they will be a very good choice. The other three power weapons I would probably stay away from. Grenade launchers aren't quite worth using, I don't think, and linear fusions and snipers in general aren't going to be worth investing your team's power weapon into that, so I just recommend probably staying away from those. Now on to my subclass suggestions. It is going to be the arc subclasses all the way through this week. So for titans, running striker is probably going to be your best option because because as I say, every time pulse nades are ridiculous, they do so much damage. Best grenade in the game, and the nade alone makes them worth using, and then also their super works quite well on this map, because the close range and Fist of Havoc pairing works quite well. Then for storm callers, just about the same spiel. They got pulse nades, pulse nades are ridiculous, they have arc souls which will give you and your entire team extra damage when you're throwing down that rift, and then their super will play very well on this map, with the good amounts of cover and close range aspects of the map. Then lastly, I think Arc Strider is going to be the best option for Hunters, because again, the close range super works well with this map. And then Arc Bolts can be great to take down teams as well. Through its chaining abilities, you can get just about everyone to have health, and it'll make fights a lot easier. However, Gunslinger would be a good option on this map as well, but I'm going to give the slight edge to Arc Strider. Now onto some more general tips. There is just the one location for power ammo on this map. And this will often become like the center of your team's fights. So in general, you want to be trying to keep good control of the power ammo. And keep that positioning so you can get the power ammo and have the advantage over the enemy team. And so at the beginning of the round, I would suggest your entire team going over towards the power ammo. And trying to establish positioning to get that first wave of power ammo. And then here's where the capture point is if the time limit does run out and nobody has a life advantage. And if you didn't know that about survival, if one team has more lives remaining than the other as the time hits zero, then the team that has more lives will win that round. So if you're in a very slow game and you have the life advantage, you might just want to try to stay alive as a team and play the time limit. And then you also have to really be aware if the enemy team is doing that to you, because if you just sit around, then you could lose by default. 
And then two last little tips I have for survival are to know your numbers and use your supers wisely. And so when I say know your numbers, basically I just mean be aware of how many people on your team and the enemy team are alive at a certain time. So if your team gets a pick and it's a 4 on 3, that's when you really want to be aggressive and push in against the enemy team because you really want to take advantage of those picks and turn the one life that you took from the enemy team to an entire team wipe and getting 4 lives taken away. And if you're really hesitant to push in after getting a kill, then teams can get away a bit and have people spawning up, and you'll be back in on a 4 on 4 without taking full advantage of the situation. And then also if you're in a fight with your team and a couple of your teammates go down, you gotta be smart, try to get out of there, save your life, and get back to a place where your teammates can spawn up and you guys can regroup and not lose so many lives. So taking advantage of when you have the advantage is very important, and knowing when to run will also help you a lot in this game mode. And the last tip is to be very smart with your super usage. When you have a very comfortable lead in lives for a round, you really want to hold on to your supers then. A lot of times people will just blow their supers when they're really not necessary and that's not something you want to be doing. And then on the other side of that, when it's just about hopeless that you're going to win a round, you really want to save your supers then. Like people blow their supers trying to make the most ridiculous plays sometimes. Just yesterday this guy tried to 1v4 my team with Arc Strider for no apparent reason and then another time these two guys had supers, they were in a 2 on 4, no lives left on their team and my team had like 4 lives and they both used their supers, didn't kill anyone. And even if they had, it really wouldn't have gotten them anywhere. So just don't be stupid, basically. If a round is looking really grim and you don't think you're going to win that one, or if you're absolutely steamrolling and you're going to win that round for sure, but it's still a close game, then hold on to your super. Unless you're just trying to be flashy and want to get clips for your YouTube video. But yeah, that's probably everything I have to say. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and see you later.